Hey there, Grumpy Old Fart here. I'm doing a Cryptid Encounter video, although it's not really a Cryptid Encounter video. I'm talking about paranormal crossovers. Um, before I get into it, though, if you enjoy my content, it would really help me out if you would hit if you would uh, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, share my content on social media, and post a comment or two. Remember, I welcome your comments, even if you disagree with me. If you enjoy a good book, check out my author page on Amazon. My pen name is H.L. Anderson. You can find all of my books there. I like to think I write good stories that make you think. I wrote a three-book science fiction western series called Drifters. I wrote a political fantasy called The Righteous President. I wrote a fun story about a house in New Orleans where the monsters all hang out. It's called The House Off Farrago Road. And I've got two books written. I'm working on a third. The first one is Vanguard 1. The second one is Task Force Terminus, and it's uh, futuristic science fiction warfare. Um, it's a study of humanity from an alien perspective. Hope you get these, and I hope you like them. All right, on with paranormal crossovers. Um, th this seems like a weird topic, I know, but there's a lot of stories and a lot of reports putting Bigfoot and UFOs together. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of overlap amongst all of the different paranormal research groups. Cryptids, ghosts, UFOs, and aliens, there seems to be a lot of connective tissue throughout all of these fields. I did a video on the ultra-terrestrial theory. Go and check that out. Um, John Keel did that theory. Uh, one, of the, one of the big universities, I don't remember which one, they've put a theory together that supposedly it, it's it's almost the same thing, but they're, except they're several decades late. John Keel did this first, the ultra-terrestrial theory. Go check that my video out on that. When I heard about this specific situation, I expected a few stories linking them together, maybe a half dozen or so. When I started researching the specific topic, I found out that people have been linking Bigfoot to UFOs for over a century. The first story I found was from a white man staying with Native Americans in 1888. They were feeding a Bigfoot-type creature who had been dropped off of a small, quote-unquote small moon along with two other Bigfoot creatures. This particular one Bigfoot creature was in a cave. The small moon, quote-unquote, was piloted by small humanoids. It had landed and let out the three Bigfoot creatures and then took off again. The Native Americans said that this was not the first time that this had happened. So this predates that. This is just the first recorded one, 1888. Uh, reports from multiple UFO and Bigfoot researchers, including Lauren Coleman, John Keel, and Linda Moulton Howe, have Bigfoot creatures interacting with gray aliens on UFO craft. Many of these stories claim the gray aliens and Bigfoot, Bigfoot creatures are both telepathic. Many of these reports have the gray aliens ordering the Bigfoot creatures around as servants. Reports of this type come from all over the world and involve other types of aliens besides the grays, although the grays are by far the most prevalent aliens in these reports. I find it intriguing and interesting that in the 1970s, Science fiction series, the in, in the 1970 science fiction series, The Six Million Dollar Man, uh, Bigfoot, they called him Sasquatch, was working for aliens. This connection was obviously well known even back then. In a number of these reports, UFOs are seen in Congress with Bigfoot creatures, and then around the same time frame, poltergeist activity begins and lasts for a period of time. So it's not just Bigfoot and UFOs. We've got ghosts and all kinds of stuff. A number of missing person reports coincide with Bigfoot sightings, UFO sightings, and ghostly sightings and poltergeist activity. I want to say David Polites mentioned this as well in his Missing 411 series. I'm not sure. I don't want to, I don't want to say for sure because I may be wrong about that. But as I understand it, that's what happened. I know, I, I, I seem to recall listening to David Pilates talking to Art Bell. It, it was either Dark Matter or Coast to Coast AM. I don't recall which. I think it was Dark Matter. 
where he was saying that Bigfoot sightings and UFOs coincided with um, some disappearances. But again, don't quote me on that. I'm going from memory and I've slept since then. It's been a while back. I miss Art Bell, great, great radio host. And David Polites does really good work too. I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm not disputing them. I'm just saying I may be remembering it wrong. At any rate, <clears throat> um, one of the most prevalent researchers into this crossover phenomena is Stan Gordon, who was actually written, who has actually written a book on it. I think I did a video on Stan Gordon. Go and check it out. Many such reports, including some in his book, have people being possessed by Bigfoot creatures with the grunting and the growling and, and snarling and like that. It would I would be curious how one would tell the difference between demonic and Bigfoot possession. They do sound similar with the noises and all. I would imagine the demonic Bigfoot can actually talk to you. I don't know. I, again, I don't know. <clears throat> Oddly enough, there are crossover stories with UFOs and ghosts, with the Loch Ness Monster, lizard men, Thunderbirds, and a whole host of other cryptids. It's not just Bigfoot. Earlier, I mentioned my video on the ultra-terrestrial theory. John Keel's theory explains all of this really well. Almost like puzzle pieces coming together. It's amazing. I used to think Keel's theory was interesting. Now, after doing the research for this particular video, I'm starting to think Keel was onto something. Historically, many mythological creatures and encounters can be explained by this ultra-terrestrial theory. Everything from dragons to leprechauns to gnomes to angels to demons to fairies, all of these fit into that theory. And people have been reporting them for centuries, for generations. If John Keel is correct, it's no wonder why people are reporting seeing several of these phenomena acting in concert in the same place at the same time. Maybe Bigfoot really does work for aliens. Who knows? Maybe the aliens are just other races indigenous to Earth and they control the various cryptids. Again, who knows? I mean, there's, there's virtually, at this point, there's virtually no way to prove any of it. We know people are seeing things that they can't explain. And they're seeing them on a regular basis. What we do know, I mean, just the sheer number of reports says some, something's going on. You know, they can't all be hoaxes. What we do know is that people are seeing a crap ton of stuff that defies explanation, and many of these reports overlap. John Keel's theory goes far to explain those reports. That's all I'm saying. Um, try, try doing some of your own research. Uh, if you find something that I've missed or something I've forgotten or something that contradicts me, please put it in the comments, okay? I'm not perfect. I don't claim to be. I'm not, I'm not the end all and be all of everything. I make mistakes the same as everybody else. I'm only human. But I welcome your comments, even if you disagree with me. And But do your own research, and, and if you find more information, put it in the comments. I'm sure everybody would love to read it. Hope this finds everybody well. You folks have a good one. Take care now. God bless one and all. There is a house in New Orleans where the monsters all hang out. When the police detective, who happens to be a skinwalker squirrel, uncovers a plot by a paranormal perpetrator, he has to enlist the aid of his fellow housemates. If you enjoy a modern quirky take on historical mythology, check out my new original novel, The House Off Farrago Road.